Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on Anubhav Learning Series with Anubhav Trainings. In our today's session, we got a very special topic of building Fury applications on SAP Business Technology Platform Cloud Foundry environment on top of our CAPM project. We will discuss about challenges and approaches of building Fury apps using SAP Business Application Studio on top of cloud application programming model. We will look at the approaches and the possible challenges which some of you are facing and try to solve these challenges through the new architecture. So let's get started our today's session. Before we start, if you enjoy these sessions, please feel free to subscribe our channel and hit a like button so that we can bring you more content of this kind for free. So let's get started. So as you have all attended my CAPM training where we had built a end-to-end -end application using cloud application programming model with the help of business application studio and deployed this application into the SAP BTP account. This application architecture includes a HANA database. So we are basically using SAP HANA as our database, HANA Cloud. On top of HANA Cloud, we are using Node.js based CAPM framework. So we are using CAPM framework with Node.js to build our middleware, which exposes the OData services using CDS. And then finally, we have also built a Fury app into our application using Fury elements. So this is our current architecture which we followed. Now, if you pay attention to our project which we built, all of it was done in Business Application Studio as a single project. But what is the disadvantage of clubbing your Fury project along with the CAPM project itself? The disadvantage is the maintenance when your developer wants to do maintenance of a project, they need to open the project from the Git as a whole and possibly it could be a high risk that you are giving and allowing users or developers to access the entire application code at one go. The second disadvantage is suppose there is a Fury developer you hire in the team. This Fury developer is more comfortable building only Fury apps. The developer doesn't have an idea of how to work with CAPM or doesn't even bother to work about CAPM. In that case, you would love or like to give the developer a single access point to all your services which are exposed via CAPM and build these applications outside the outside the CAPM project. So this way we want to, to decouple and the main advantage of this approach will be you can build so many Fury applications which are freestyle and Fury elements outside, manage them outside the project. You don't have to do git push, git pull, and you don't have to redeploy the whole MTAR archive all over again. And you can independently manage all these Fury applications by default. So any Fury app developer who just prime predominantly focus only on Fury part will be able to access our CAPM applications. And CAPM will be used to expose the old data services eventually, which gives you a feel of working with, with a abstracted way with CAPM framework. So what we did here is in this application, if I just switch over to my business application studio, we built this application in our training, our CAPM training, and then we have deployed this in SAP BTP. After deploying this in SAP BTP, you can see this application is running as a service. And when I access this service, what I would get is the endpoints. So let me open the service and if I access the service, you will see the service opens. Now in this service, actually I have created two endpoints. The first endpoint is CDS based service. This is more of a read only data. We are just giving this data for read only purpose. But on the other side, this particular service is a critical service because this service has all the curd queue functionality, which means we are allowing to perform even the create, read, update, delete operation on these entity sets. Hence, this is little critical. So I can give a read permission with the views with a limited set of data publicly on the internet. But here on this part, I cannot give a full access, a full blown access to the, the consumers without authenticating them. 
So hence, I have secured these endpoints with cloud security, which we learned in our also uh, CAPM training. You can join my SAP BTP course on anubotrainings.com to learn how did I build this service and how did I build CDS and Odata services using CAPM end-to-end, -end, including Node.js basics. But let's focus on only on this use case here. So this read-only point is accessible publicly, but this point is secured with authentication. So now in the browser, when I access my purchase order work list, which is coming out of a view, CDS view, you will see the data comes up, which is read-only. But the moment I try to access, let's say, a business partner or address data, it gives me an unauthorized error because we have secured it. So now if you would like to build a Fury application outside the CAPM project, this challenge of authentication will also come to you. As you all know, we use multiple concepts like app router, access UAA, JOT token, and OAuth based authentication in SAP BTP for security. We have a challenge to access and build application outside the CAPM project as a freestyle or as a few element project in business application studio directly. To overcome this challenge, we will see the process and how do we overcome and how do we build a freestyle application on serverless runtime, which means any Fury developer onboarded in your company can build Fury applications in BTP directly without really bothered about the backend, whether it is CAPM or on-premise system. But this authentication will really create a challenge for us to be able to build that application. So first, let's understand how through the Postman we solve this problem. So as you know, we will first contact our OAuth server to generate the JOT token. And this JOT token we will inject in our ongoing request to the BTP. And once this is verified by BTP, the OAuth authentication occurs and eventually you will get access. So I will first demonstrate this process in Postman. Switch over to the Postman. And here I will first get the JOT token for my uh, for my uh, BTP account. And now you can see I'm passing the client ID and client secret. This you can obtain by going to SAP BTP, go to terminal, and then you can just use CF environment variable and your application name. So our application name is uh, 12 capm srv So I can read the environment variable. And now you can see all this information is available here. The client ID, the client secret, yes, and the authentication API URL, all the details are available here. So this information I will maintain and uh, I would just pass this information here, client ID, client secret, all the details to this OAuth URL of my BTP account. When I click a post request on this, I would get a JOT token. I will copy this JSON web token or JOT token, which is base64 encoded. And I will now go back to the same URL which I was trying to access slash catalog service. You might have noticed in the browser when I access uh, this catalog service, it gives me this unauthorized error. So through the Postman now, I will show you accessing it first. So in the Postman, I will go and access the same endpoint. And now here I will pass authorization as bearer space my JOT token. Yes, I'll pass this and click send. And voila, you can see I am now able to access my service, which is protected by cloud security in BTP. Now, how do you achieve the same process in a fully automated way using BTP when you want to build a Fury app? To do that, what I've done here is I have created a destination in SAP BTP. So we switch over back to our BTP account and you can see we have created here a destination called CAPM project test of type OAuth2 user token exchange in which we also pass here the details about our uh, URL of our endpoint, then internet and the type is OAuth user token exchange. We pass the client ID client secret and also our token service URL. Since this destination will be used by BTP to also create a Fury app, we will pass as usual our normal properties like HTML dynamic uh, destination type true, timeout 60,000, uh, web ID enabled true, and web ID usage O data gen. Additionally, I will pass the scope of my uh, scope of my access point as well, which is being taken as per the roles defined in access security JSON file. So once we pass this and we can check the connection, you can see connection is good. 
and now I can use this connection capam project test in my business application studio to build a freestyle or a fury element application outside the capam project as I told you the main advantage is if your company is having a project where you would like to build the backend using capam publish it once for all and leave it and then you want to just build fury apps multiple fury apps you can independently assign to each and every developer who is coming from fury background have no clue about capam they all can independently build these many fury applications just by uh, using the odata service exposed via capam as you all know odata is an abstraction layer it doesn't matter what backend do you use whether it is s4 ana on premise cloud capam based or rap based projects eventually fury app will be able to we will be able to build so having said that let's go back and see how do we build now fury app based on this destination this destination is so important this is the crux of today's lesson so now i will switch over back to business application studio and let's create a fury app now uh, which is outside the capm project so this is our capm project of course you can also build a project uh, inside the app folder of your capm but then it's kind of deeply integrated within the capm project usually i i build my capm project i deploy it and then i would like my fury developers to start development on top of it without touching my capm project so that way my architecture is more clean and neat and i will manage my html5 module with uh, with the cloud foundry managed app router which is also going to cause less cost in terms of uh, return on investment in btp so let's create now a few replication so we switch over back to uh, view find command and i will open the welcome page and we will build a fury application from template and we can choose here a fury application click next and now i will choose fury application of type freestyle and we will probably build a work list application click next and now you can see here we've got data source so let us choose the data source as connect to a system and of course we will now choose the destination which we just created which is going to give us authentication and now you can see choose this option it will automatically do the same process which i showed you in postman it will go contact the oauth server get the token uh, take the scope inject the scope and pass this jot token to the to the uh, to the capm project and now i can provide my service path so let's get the service path we will be using odata v2 server proxy which we learned in our training to also access a v2 based odata service so let's come back and use that slash v2 slash catalog service and then the metadata will be read out of the box from this it's going to take few seconds it's contacting our service and then it's going to read the metadata so system fetched the metadata now you can see the next button is enabled i click on next button and now I can get all my entity set. Wow. So let's choose purchase orders. And I wanted to show here the details on purchase orders like ID. I will choose as purchase order number. Purchase order number. We will display also the gross amount and also the purchase order status. So let's click next. I will just give my project name. So this is a serverless Fury app serverless fury app and let's put our website name anubautrainings.com and we just give a namespace anubaut.fiori and now we can just add deployment configuration along with flp configuration because we want to eventually take this into sap uh, central fury launchpad in sap btp so we will provide all the details so click next and we choose here cloud foundry as our development environment where we will eventually deploy this application for the the deployment configuration and of course it should also use the cap destination which we created and we would like to go with a managed app router by cloud foundry so click next and let's give the semantic object purchase order and this is going to be manage and manage purchase order 
on a group trainings. We click on finish and that's it. Our independent Fury app project is getting generated. You can see it is including all the UI5 tooling, the UI5 local and, and UFI YAML file. It is adding all the, the configuration to run and test the Fury app, generating the necessary artifacts for the Fury app, including the unit and integration tests. And then additionally, we are also getting the UI5 tooling installed with the required Node.js modules. It will also add uh, the required modules to be able to test this application locally and also the MTA YAML file to package our application as a multi-target application and then eventually connect to our destination. So all the necessary details are now clubbed together in this single application, you can see. And we can just right away go ahead and test. So you see, this is our Capum project where we have the service and it's deployed as an independent microservice. And this is our Fury project, which is outside the Capum project this time, connected to that Capum project. Uh, and obviously it can be scaled independently up and down. And this will be published as a another microservice on BTP. So having said that, let's do a preview of this application and we will start the preview here. So it should probably get me all the purchase orders from our existing application. So I will start the application preview here, which begins the UI5 uh, uh, runtime proxy to connect to our Capm server through the destination. It also takes care of a token exchange uh, by considering the cloud security in place, contacting the access UAA server and obtaining the JWT token and injecting that scope into the subsequent call to the service. And that is how we will be able to test our app. So let's open this. And now I just start our application from the test folder sandbox. Okay, it's loaded. Let's click on that. And now it's going to start our application. So you see, as a Fury developer, I really don't bother whether it is built on Capam or it's built on an on-premise system. And we should be able to access all the data here in this Fury app. There you go. You can see all my data is popping up here in the system and my Fury app is ready. So that's the end of today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. How to build a freestyle Fury application without any server um, in place. Of course, there is a server, but it's independently deployed as a separate project. We are using SAP HANA database. And if you want to become expert on SAP BTP development with Capm and Fury on Business Application Studio, feel free to join our training on anubautrainings.com. Thanks for watching this video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.